afternoon, or yep, uh, a Yorkshireman who will enjoy this uh, this Sunday London knees up. Not strictly a Cockney knees up, of course. You can't quite hear the bow bells from this part of town, but we're all set for some capital entertainment from the Premiership's Pearly Kings. Bit of a sing song. Promises a lot of fun and in front of what may be the biggest crowd of the season here. Only Newcastle will lose fewer players during the Six Nations, so Declan Kidney. An Irish already playing uh, some nice rugby. Know that these next couple of months offer an opportunity to increase that momentum. Skipper Matt Rogerson returns to do his bit alongside the youthful but impressive Pearson and Cunningham South in the back row. Two Wallabies in the second row. And Oliver Hoskins, another restored to the tight head side of the scrum. Irish rather filleted of frontline speedsters. Ollie Hassel Collins, Ben Loder, Carl Rowe, Tom Parton all missing. Uh, so Michael Dykes, big day on the left wing, his first Premiership game, Premiership debut. Tabai Matson has, selectorally at least, been restocking Quinn Shells this week. What with the Six Nations, there are five missing from the 15 that started in the Champions Cup. Don Brandt, Walker, Murley, Marchant, Smith, all with England. So Tommy Allen, who will be joining up with Italy tomorrow, starts at fly half alongside Kerr who does equal the club's appearance record, game number 351, level now with Mike Brown. Elsewhere, Oscar Beard, about to enjoy his first Premiership start of the season. Will Edwards for Aaron Morris, a late change. George Head hooks while Jack Walker's got his mind on the Calcutta Cup and a return to the Prem as well for the first time this season. David, for um, the skipper, Steph Levis, what are the other head-to-heads? Well, I quite like the look in the, in the second row with uh, Adam Coleman against Erna Herbst. Not, not for any real technical reason, they're just both massive units who love to get really, really physical, really aggressive blokes. As long as they keep it legal, they're great to watch, can't wait. Well, on the theme of physicality, whilst we're expecting plenty of tries and going coast to coast, two really important men for me, Van Rensburg and Esther Hazen. They will be their defensive captains trying to lock the doors there as well as give that front foot game line ball. out by Matson. He and they not had far to travel. They've lost five players, as we've said, and a coach to England this week. Captain Stefan Levis in the middle of all that has been banging the drum, telling them all that they have to step up. All about injecting energy a little further down the squad list today. An Irish a week on from their agonising exit from the Champions Cup. Frustration of surrendering a a 21-0 lead down in Montpellier. Only this and the Premiership Cup to pin their hopes on now between here and the end of the season. Levis underlining the fact that everybody will have just a slightly bigger burden to carry over the next couple of months. Everybody, we hope, will enjoy that burden. Certainly. Steph Levis will captain again. First time we have seen him in the Premiership this season. And he's back for a neighbourly West London chat. Lovely pocket of a block of Quinn's fans as well. It's one of the things we might get into a little bit over the course of the match. I know Will Evans is a big fan of uh, away ends at rugby grounds. They divide opinion, but... Um, Will Evans, certainly uh, the back rower, love the noise that Quinn supporters generated under the roof in Paris against Racing a few weeks ago. We'll, uh, we'll get our teeth into that, but you can be sure that there will be a good noise, noise today. And Matt Rogerson for Irish, back involved after missing Montpellier at the end of the week when he's agreed a new contract. A slow walk out and then the run. to the place Brentford's football fans like to call their bus stop in Hounslow. They love their bus stop in Hounslow, and so increasingly do Irish's rugby fans use. It's a brilliant place to come and watch a sport. Brentford as a football team doing so well in the Premier League. London Irish, well, they certainly play some attractive rugby, and no doubt we'll get another repeat of that today. They had 15,000 here for last year's St. Patrick's Day game against Northampton. That is currently the record. They're busy counting up the numbers at the moment, but um, 
we, uh, we hope that they might outstrip that today. Matthew Carley. Next stop for him is Rome. He'll be running the lines for Italy against France next Sunday. Jordan Way, incidentally, the uh, Australian assistant, uh, will be running the, long, the, the lines alongside Carly. Joe James is the other touch judge. Ben Whitehouse will be the TMO for Italy against France. So a Six Nations warm-up for three of the four officials as well today. Two of the Gallagher premierships. Big, big crowd pleasers. Five-star entertainers, festival headliners. And on a, a drizzly West London afternoon, it's uh, Quinns in the lighter blue who take the first catch. Come on the line, Quinns. Now that is a first hit from Tom Pearson. Bit of footwork, no thanks. Pearson with a really good chase from a decent kick. That is a massive shot, and it's put Irish in a really good position. Rory Jennings in midfield today. They have a penalty. It has been a, a big Irish start, led by that man, Pearson. Coleman, all over the top. Nearly, nearly, nearly from the fullback, Will Edwards. But back Roll we come. Out. It's good rugby, isn't it, from London Irish? Direct, we spoke about this level of pass. And when you've got penalty advantage, you're more than likely to be able to get it. But this penalty, this is about choice of tackle and winning the collision. You can see George Henn, he's trying to take Jennings back to where he's come from, gets himself trapped in there. And within the first minute or so, London Irish, well, they're winning every collision at the minute, aren't they? Another great opportunity. Good strong line that from Jennings. We expect that from Janta van Rensburg. That was good stuff and good and direct. Creamy. Coleman. Irish shoving. Smuggled back to the Puma. Some help from the Scott. Ben White, not far away. He might uh, need to take it shortly, but uh, well, Creamy's still eager for work. Still a little punchy steps, and this might take them to some very interesting places. See that uh, the penalty has been drawn, so they might as well give it a blast. Heavy, heavy rain now as Stokes tries to work his way through, but he was held up by Edwards. Jackson. Left wing is Michael Dykes, Premiership debut for him today. Still playing advantage. Hoskins, Van Rensburg, Pearson, hauled back by Wilco Lowe. And Rensburg again reloading to be part of that, and now Sinti. Really impressed from fullback in Montpellier last weekend. He beavered away, that's gone loose. Entry. No, 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 the more. Okay, okay. Ball lifted there. Entry at the mall. Number really, entry. really aggressive stuff from London Irish. That mauling was patient, it was tight, it was consistent. It forced Harlequins Just to cheat the in the end to come in at the side. Quinn's had to do something, or they were slowly, slowly getting marched over. A judge to have piled in at the side there. You can end up around there if you begin at the back, but you can't enter there. Same again, maybe. I thought they were going to score there. Real. real positivity of patience wasn't it looked to have stalled but they're going again here what are you looking at take us in this day well I just want they've landed and gone a bit quicker here less about the setup more about instant power Quinn's are strapped Quinn's are scrambling too late really really good variation from London Irish the first mall they got themselves down they set up they got themselves where they wanted to be and they ground it forward this time they said we get the ball secure we land and we go See if Quinns are quick enough on their toes, see if they can scramble hard enough, fast enough, wrap themselves back round. No, they can't. No, they couldn't. Really good stuff. Who scored? John Cunningham South scored it, we think. That's he was... Hey. You can do my job. That's it. Done. Shall I get the beers in? <laughs> Hot dog? Brilliant, that was. Took his in there and ended up scoring, and it was Chandler Cunningham South in the middle of it all. Again, there's, there is a, an element of patience here, but far less. They said, we don't want to be patient. Good, Actually, Cheers, get man. the ball safe and go, go, go.
That doesn't work every time, because if you're doing that every time, it, there, it's easy to spin and dislodge. So that little bit of subtle variation ends up in a, a try for Cunningham South, but it's really well worked by the callers. He's um, sandwiched in between some pretty decent company kicking-wise in the Premiership this season, Paddy Jackson. Back involved in the Premiership after a rare absence against Bristol. Had a, a sore calf. Calf working, Irish working, Irish leading. 7 0. And when you think about the try, yeah, we can talk about the lineup, but that one restart and a great chase on Pearson took them into that corner. And then it was their relentless attitude to getting their drills right. A very bright start from Irish. He's a really impressive player, Cunningham South. Trying the win here against Saracens last month. He's enjoying Premiership starts for the first time this season. And any of you who watched Irish down in Montpellier last weekend will, will know that he impressed Montpellier. Now then, ball's gone loose. White from Rendsburg for company on that far right-hand side. So too Adam Coleman. This is Will Goodrick Clark punches it into the 22. It's been a start from Irish, full of Sunday no beef and a few Yorkshire puts thrown on top as well. This has been fabulous stuff from them. And it continues to build and wonderful and what a score. Michael Dykes has only been a, a Premiership player for six minutes. But Irish in full sail. And Nick, it just comes from good, efficient rugby. The game's won upon physicality. This is cutting himself. Burst through. That's Ernie Herbs and Wilco Low. That's a great carry. When they get that momentum, how about that for a kick and a kick chase? That disrupts. And off the back of it, we're talking about just playing what you see, and I know that sounds so cliche, but you're playing to space, and you put the ball in hands of people that can actually do things, Tom Pearson being one of those, and then it's about offloading, playing to the space, and for Dykes, well, that's his first touch on his debut, his first try. Two weeks after his Champions Cup debut, he really caught the eye in the Premiership Cup. Four tries, including one at the stoop earlier in the season. A hat-trick against Saris, and he's already setting up tries for Paddy Jackson to convert in the Premiership. Lovely moment for Michael Dykes. Good on him. Pearson, a telling contribution as per. Just ruck speed. There's so much ruck speed that leads up to this point. Options everywhere because Quinns just cannot organise themselves. The ball is so quick. They're two teams that love and achieve a lot of quick ruck ball, but you've got to slow them down or you'll get torn apart. Stay there, though. Stay Possession. There. You're fine, but stay there. No, Not quite all green, but good enough. It certainly has been. London Irish scored a second amount of tries from their own half. And it's not all about just throwing the ball around, it's setting up platforms like this, making good decisions, allied with good execution. And that penalty advantage, well, that's going to give them more territory and another opportunity to play. From Rendsburg, he has been prominent early on, so too Stokes, who was part of the try. How do Quinn's rebalance here? Goodness me, they've barely got off the bus. Yeah. 14 nils, nothing for Quinns, is it? <laughs> nothing. Well, we talked a lot about rock speed in the in the build-up to this match. Not that you didn't, but make sure they're fastest arms providers against the second fastest that providers, that right, and yeah. that's where we are it, it in real time. Me, but it's high force, so make sure at you're the moment. There. But Nick, I mean, Paddy Jackson's going to try and chew off as much as he can. But you have a look at the options that London Irish have in the lineup. They've got Augustin Creevy, an international player. Rob Simmons, Adam Coleman, Rogerson's an option, Pearson's another option, and so's Chandler Cunningham South. Well, that went to the front, and Simmons, it barely got off the ground, but it worked beautifully, and Van Rensburg full of beans. Irish's big gain line buster again this season. Dykes popping off on the other side. Hoskins. Brilliant tackle. Brilliant tackle from Marla. 
And a tackle that just sways momentum a little bit, the kind of things that Harlequins need at the moment. This is Will Edwards, change to the published lineup. Aaron Morris was hoping to play in the Premiership for the first time this season, but he hurt himself training on Friday, so Edwards at 15. And having to do an awful lot of defending, Sinti. Oh, no way through, and they, once again, uh, the tackles that just left, lift the spirits, Stefan Levis. Stefan Levis does a brilliant bit of defending because he doesn't run out to chase. He holds his feet knowing that he can use that touchline to be able to monitor, drift off and then execute the tackle. I'll tell you what, good wheels too from him. It's a top class winger trying to stretch his outside shoulder. Well, Stefan Levis, 6'7", 120, 125 kilos. It's a bit of athleticism, that, and a really good hit. He stood off until the moment was right, and then he stopped standing off and whacked him. Well, we've had two tries before we've had the first scrum. Chandler Cunningham South, Michael Dykes in no time at all. The Queens with their watertight scrum over the last couple of games in the Champions Cup, at least. Oh, that's come out and it's free, and... White has it, and Jackson, what on earth happened there? Over the top from Van Rensburg, and then the chasing Stokes. Counter was legal. Shades of um, Eben Etzebeth just then. Different phase of the match, but Quinn's once again burgled off ball. They were expecting that it was going to be all theirs. They keep getting their pockets picked, don't they? Ben White really sharp. He did well on the far side there too. Lost control They've been turned the over now. We'll have a good look at that. Quinn's were scrummaging hard. Marla was moving forward on that side. Just wonder if they forgot about the ball. They did. They just forgot about the ball. Do you know what? I think Lorde left it to Evans, and Evans left it to Lorde, and it slipped between them. So. You want your back row, as I tell you now, as a front row forward, you really need your back row to commit to actually pushing and not standing up like meerkats and having a look around. They're not scrum inspectors, they've got to push. But when they buy in too hard and take their eyes off the ball, Same bad again, things nice can happen, so there's a balance. Put it in. That was perfect last time. Well, due to have a chat with Adam Jones in the second half, which I'm quite relieved about, to be honest, because I'm not entirely sure where we'd go if we were having a natter in the next few minutes. He will not have enjoyed that. They like the pushing bit, not the rest of it. Set. It's um, Will Goodrick Clark. Advantage if you want to play. <laughs> Pulling down, falling on the outside, number one. Well, Goodrick Clark initially seemed to be working really hard to, yeah. to hold that flats, but not quite enough in the end. He was. Goodrick Clark's really gone after Wilco Lowe, and that, that's what I find most interesting. Keep your eyes on Wilco Lowe on the Quinn's tight head. Goodrick Clark, an, another massive man, goes after him. It goes down a bit, but watch Lowe now. He just keeps driving. Once it goes down, you see the knees drop a bit. He keeps going. He keeps driving. Here it comes. That's when he could fold, but he doesn't. He goes again. He goes again with the help From... of his second row, with the help of Herbst. That is, that's a massive effort, and it's just refusing to fold. A well-deserved yeah. penalty. We talk about those straight lock legs, which which Goodrick Clark had, which I guess Ollie, Ollie, adds to Ollie, the imbalance. The but if you're pushing as a loose head, you've got to have straight legs, haven't you? That's that's inevitable. Well, if if, if they're straight, you're, you're more locked out than you are pushing. You know, if you're trying to push a broken down car, you've got to bend your legs at some point to take steps forward. And when you eventually do it, can what destabilize you. So Wilco Lowe's legs were bent, and they were better off for it. That carry by Marla is Harlequin's <laughs> third carry in 13 and a half minutes. They've had 10% of the ball. Kerr kicks it away and shakes his head. He really wasn't happy with that, and Sinti draws it back. He's still only 22, Lucio Sinti, a dozen caps. He is going to be quite a player. He's already won. <laughs> As is this man, you'd imagine, Chandler Cunningham South. Hold in here, and thank Jackson, you. Jackson, up with the raindrops. Bassett. Esther Hazen, we can mention Andre Esther Hazen for the first time today, his 50th start in the Premiership. Tackle! Wilco, uh, rather, Dino Lamb. That was short. 
and offered potential, but Pearson got in the way, but not terminally from a Quinn's perspective. It's decent hurrying again from Sinti. Lord A smashed into Jackson, but Jackson determined, stood his ground. Care controlled initially on his inside instep you, by inside. Stokes. First time that um, started to hear Quinn's yeah. roaring a little bit, however. Absolutely. Well, I mean, Danny Care, he's putting well, that know. surge in here, but surge and kick. But look at the level of physicality from London Irish at the moment. Not only are they disrupting them, they're moving them back. And the ball's so slow, Danny Care's having to wait. They're trying to get into shape. This is a good line. Paddy Jackson disrupts. The ball's really slow again. Harlequins, they feed off quick ball. And at the moment, they're not able to do that. So they're having to go to other measures to try and find field position to restart it. Yeah, I think they're carrying on without John, you. John, look though. at guys like Chandler Cunningham South, like Tom yeah. Pearson, Oogs, and I think back to when the young lads started when we were young. It's almost you want to get through your first season or two without mucking it up too badly. <laughs> These lads have just arrived, and they're looking to smack to bits the people they've been watching on TV. The guys that are supposed to be their heroes, they're ragdolling them. Oof. Ooh, that was Cunningham look South the in the middle of all that. Oscar Beard took it in. Matthew Carley said it looked like it was on the chest to him. That was definitely Marla with a powerful shoulder. Quinn's just picking it up a little bit here. Herbst to Head, George Head. Opportunity to set sail from the off in a Premiership game. Care, record equaling game for him. Esther Hazen. Now then, Nick David. First time we've really mentioned him and creating a, an element of chaos. It's a, a very hefty run from Lou. Now Herbst, the big hammers coming out. And a handy position to be in. Lavis offering himself, goes in to try to disrupt previous tackle and then cares there to lever it away but Pearson I think it was he who conceded the penalty it's a penalty whoever conceded it Edwards second man in rock formed he leant over the bodies to play the ball I think Cunning himself might find himself in a bit of hot water if I have a look at this tackle this is I mean on the ball there Ben that's the exact Body position, we're not. We're trying to get away from right, upright. I think that's above Done. the ball, unfortunately, for cutting himself. Does he hit the head? It's 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 the impact's on the shoulder, isn't it? Yeah, on the ball for me. It's yeah. just a high impact uh, thing. He's upright. There's no clear head contact. Well, there's plenty of time for TMO to have a look at it, which is Ben Whitehouse. And let's go. He seems to be happy. Okay, We've not had a, a formal check, a formal review. But th th they're the margins. They are the margins. When you are upright and you're trying to make that type of aggressive tackle. You're playing with fire, aren't you? You are playing yeah. with fire. Fortunately, it looks like he's got his timing and his height right. Yeah. But you get that fractionally wrong and a card's coming out of the referee's Time pocket. On. It just it's comes almost to the like side of the post, guys. The high position of the ball in the carry uh, from Oscar Beard has probably helped Cunningham South because he's actually hit the ball and bounced off yeah, it a little bit. If that ball is side, under his arm, sort of forward, yeah? nice almost sort of down on his hip, a bit further down, he's in trouble. I mean, it, that has got to be as close to borderline as you can get without getting into serious trouble. I mean, John the Cunningham South is a very big man, a tall man, and he's practically bolt upright at that point, and he hits low to high. He's got away with one, I think. Or it's close at least. Oscar Beard still with us, by the way. Sorry, Hughes. And this is where Harlequins, I think, are at their attacking best. Centre field scrum, the options they've got. I think they'll look to scrum again just because of the threats which they have. It's a very familiar picture which they present here. Esther Hazen to the right. Yeah. Are we all right there, boys? Are we all right? Esther Hazen now having a chat with height, please, Green. Tommy Allen and Will Edwards, so you've you got your two tens, your two generals in the back. Esther Hazen and David to the right. 
and then Oscar Beard and Josh Bassett to the left. What they want is for Oscar Beard and Esther Hazen to run those out-to-in lines to get people to bite in at that. And then it's about picking the options, either using that front runner or coming out of the back and then it being a numbers game. Nick David, furthest on the right. Josh Bassett, furthest on the left. They come to the right. Care over the top, looking for David. It was um, slapped away with just the one hand. It's a yellow card, I'm sorry. But does it not count as a yellow card because they've already got an advantage? Is that in, in, if they don't have an advantage, that's the easiest yellow of the season. I mean, I know what trying to catch a ball looks like. That doesn't look like it. I'll show you the best angles now. Here's Ben Whitehouse. He's got time and space to read the pass. That is just as he make a not an attempted attempt catch it. of a ball. <laughs> yeah, here it comes. Our left arm is in a sort of a flapping, slapping. An NBA rejection. Me. Okay, so he does have time and space. He does have an opportunity to catch the ball, but he actually chooses to deliberately play the ball forwards and away from the Harlequins player. Agreed. Okay, so we need the wide angle, please. If we've got a higher shot to see if there's any potential for a penalty Could try. Could be a penalty try. Yeah, we'll get that for you now, Matt. Forwards. Here it comes, Matt, right. your best angle. Well, okay, but for that, so would he have caught it and scored? that one more time, please? Yeah. Nick David. Coming up again. Well, that's coming up. Would. Yeah, OK, so if he doesn't do that, 14 for me is going to catch the ball and he's probably going to score a try. I agree. So it's a yellow card to 14, uh, 14 green or 11? I'm just, all the angles I've got is from the front. I'll just get the angle now. And a penalty try. Well, it's yeah, been a bit busy first 20 minutes, the first 20 minutes of yeah. Michael Dyke's Premiership career. A try and a yellow card. And the yellow card leading to a Quinn's penalty try, who are up and running. We've seen a shift this year with knock-ons becoming automatic yellow cards and it's applied a bit of rugby knowledge and I think when, when you offer that picture to the referee where you go with it one hand stretched over your head and the ball propels forward by about five metres because of that motion, I think that's a good decision. Lord A's catch. Marla takes it up. There's Kiss standing by to uh, have a word with us once we've seen where this latest passage takes us. Care, plenty of height on that. Makes it contestable. Back Quinns, play on. Deflected back on the Quinn side, however. Not good news for Quinns. Stokes scores. Irish are loving this. Hasn't been a great 20 minutes or so for Danny Kerr on his record-breaking 351st game for Quinns. It wasn't a good kick, didn't get anywhere near the distance on it. James Stokes got after it. Danny Kerr had to make that tackle. He was never going to make the ball as quickly as Stokes. He had to take the man, so the kick goes up. Danny Kerr stands back, hoping for the best. Stokes gets onto that. Kerr has to ignore that ball and make the hit. He's the only man there. Really, really good from Stokes. Not on a captain's referral, no. Just so you're aware, Ben, they asked for eight. It's the clear out on eight. I'm already checking it in the background, you and Matt. I've got the angles in front of me. Right, so the try's good. Yes. Yeah, Matt, I'm going to show you this clear out by seven, right. uh, six Harlequins. Okay, so we can do that after the conversion, yeah? Yeah, that's fine. The try is good. Okay. Yeah, what's on Ben Whitehouse's mind uh, is uh, a clear out from Steph Levis that will be checked. Clearly not going to impact on the try, but it may well impact on Steph Levis. So he's striking it beautifully again. 21-7. Three Three tries for Irish. And here comes the uh, the TMO check. Ooh, it's a shoulder on Chandler Cunningham South's head. You tell me when you're at the screen, Matt, and I'll show it. Okay. 
what are you, you showing me a, a dangerous clear -out? I am showing you an illegal clear out by six Harlequins on eight London Irish. Okay. I'm thinking of the Kieran already. Parker red here Here's a couple your, yeah, of weeks ago. Here are the angles coming up in, in a reel now. Against the Stormers. I think the next angle is the best angle, Matt. Yeah, okay. Can we have that one live speed as well? Yeah, thank you, Ben. Just wow, and we can have it before the, the tappy takes place as well, that'd be appreciated. Yeah, mate, you'll get that sorted for you. Yeah, thank you. He's in trouble, isn't he? Well, it's a shoulder to the head. So I suppose the question and unless is, there are any is mitigating we circumstances. Whether made an attempt to grasp that player on the floor or whether he's just cleaned him out with a tucked arm. Because it's shoulder directly to the head and I don't see any other factors other than whether we feel like it, what the level of force is or the level of danger. Can we just see it one more time, Ben? He's yeah, never been red carded, again. Stefan Levis. We're going to pause on the point of contact here. I don't think there's any, any question about where the shoulder so goes. See there, he's got a clenched fist and the arm down, so I don't see him making any attempt to grasp that player on the floor. I agree with the facts. So it's a reckless, it's a reckless challenge, shoulder directly to the head. Agree. OK, so I'm going to get a go for a red card. Anyone disagree? No, with you. It's the ugliest of starts to Quinn's No, 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 match. You, you had the advantage, you scored the it's try. It's Stefan Levice's first ever on. red card in the it's Premiership. And his first game this season in the Premiership has lasted a little over 20 minutes. And the, uh, the apology from Steph Levice. But Tell me there's another one to the long, long list that we've been talking about this season and another one where there's Are you ready? Uh, very little doubt about it. Yeah, there's no doubt about that according to the law. I'm uncomfortable with you saying according to the law, Hughes. It's the law, isn't it? And it's a, it's a red card, or do you, are you not sure about the law as it stands? No, no, I've, no, I've, I've no problem with the law. What I would say is, I think, if you're entering the ruck, we know exactly what constitutes legality at the ruck. It's staying on your feet. If you are off your feet at the ruck, it makes it very, very difficult as a height for players to clear out, but you cannot connect with the head. Flatshy Tuppensworth. I think it's reckless, the arm's down, it looks like a bit of a shoulder charge to me when it's at full speed, it looks like he knows what he's doing, he's just trying to nail somebody at the ruck. I don't think he's aiming for the head, but that isn't the point, that's not relevant. These guys know the laws, there's plenty of body to hit, he's about six foot six, Chandler cutting himself, there's plenty more to hit, he also wasn't a threat because he's lying down effectively, he's not over the ball, there's just no need, call it a rugby incident if you want, I think it's borderline one of those, but he's whacked the head so that's that, just have a think, he wasn't a threat anyway, no need. Meantime, Allen, with both sides at the moment, down to 14. Quinns will be permanently down to 14, however. Michael Dykes will come back from his yellow card in six minutes. Number two. Yeah, joining halfway, that's fine. Let's have a chat with, with Les. Goodness me, Les, we seem to be Number two, chatting every entry. time these days, just after, just after red cards. I, 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 I hesitate Sorry, to ask you about this one, left, but, but th there can be no argument, can there? Whichever side of the halfway line you're on. Well, what do you think? Tell me what you think. Yeah, yeah, look, we are 14 men against 14 men. That's what I know at the moment. Uh, we just have to control our actions here and, and and make sure we try to do what we've been doing, which I think is maybe controlling the air a bit better. Uh, you know, we're probably controlling the kicking game in the aerial contest a bit better, uh, creating quick ruck, particularly when we're down in their third. If we control those things and our discipline and keep them away from here, they're in a good place. Les, I don't want you to shout at me, but but can we just talk generally about, about players going into rocks? Is it time that, that more of them just said, listen, we're not going to win this one, we just need to stand back out of it? 
Yeah, well, we're always trying to coach making good, strong decisions in that area and, and, and not bring ourselves into the law, but also to make sure that we're not wasting numbers. You want numbers in the defence line in that as well. So I think the overall, the bottom thing about line about it, we want player safety and, and you've got to look at the actions that are dangerous and that's probably what they did then. All right, Les, we'll let you get on with it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Meantime, Quinns and Kerr. Oh, lost it, spilt. It's the, tenth red, sorry, it's the tenth red card of the Premiership season. David, apologies. Sorry, Nick. I, it's shame okay, time that off, time off. For Danny Kerr and for Quinns, looks like someone's hurt. To Adam Coleman. Yeah, it's Adam Coleman. Hughes, what are you looking at? Well, Les Kiss was talking yeah, about winning are, yeah, the yeah. air. Well, look at the actions of the Harlequins people. In a ball like that, I you have to be anticipating the crumbs. They don't move. They don't move. Only Ben White moves. He anticipates the ball and picking up on those crumbs. The competition in the air is so competitive. So you have to be around for if someone pats it down or the ball bounces to stand still and play stuck in the mud. You get and can see tries like that. Oh, this looks, this looks horrible because the stretcher is coming out for poor old Adam Coleman. Yeah, nothing clear, mate. Yeah. While he takes um, takes the treatment that he needs, let's have another look at this red card because I'm sure that Nick Easter and the boys are going to be talking about it in the studio at half time. To, to, to the suggestion that I'm sure loads of people will be thinking at home watching this, David, and we talked to Les about it. When will players stop going Ooh. into battles that it seems to us up here are unwinnable? Well, if you don't go into that battle and he doesn't slip his right and Cunningham sells planted foot his right foot doesn't slip a bit and he falls over he nicks that ball and then you get a hammering for not taking out the jackaler so it, I get, I, hang on hang on hang on it's I difficult it, it, it is about making strong but, decisions but listen, and it's easy and i said it it's easy for us to say he's no you, threat what you're saying and how you're saying it. but herb's job is to remove threats from that rut his job is to remove them legally that is really if that was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you're piling in with your arm tucked, it's a potential cheap shot. That's really what it is. He just happens to have caught ahead and it was reckless. It's a reckless decision, but I think when we talk about player safety, I think it's both players. Stefan Levis shouldn't be going into a ruck like that, but also, cutting himself, you're off your feet. When you're off your feet, you should be out of the game. And we want attacking players at the ball to do that legally. That lifts the height at which should be cleared out. And therefore, those threats and those collisions actually don't become. By no way am I disputing whether that's a red card or not. Levy should not be going in there. But I think in terms of making the game safer, if you've got legality of people who are actually approaching the ball, that actually lifts the height to where the contest is going to be, which offers more of the body to be able to clear out. Does that make sense? Yeah, but you, but you can't. I, I, I see what you're saying, Oogs, and it makes it safer and cleaner. But if I'm in cunning, if I'm defending and I'm in that position, the more upright I stand, the easier I'm to whack out the way. The less work it is for the attacking players, the quicker they're ball and the less likely I am to steal the ball. So absolutely, tacklers and people around the tackle are going to try and be as low as possible. You know, that's that's the only way to compete at breakdowns. If you're going to stand up, arms in the air, and give everyone a clear target, you're never going to turn any ball no, over. Geordie. And what's going to happen to you is what happened to Quinns in the first 15, 20 minutes. You're going to concede a ton of quick ball and lose and concede points. So <laughs> there is a balance. It's decision making. I think Herb's arrived there wanting to whack someone Levis. and whack someone. Levis, sorry, sorry, sorry. I keep saying Levis arrived there and wanted to whack someone and did. And it's a, it's just a reckless decision. It's a rush of blood to the head. And it's definitely a red card. Well, meantime, this is awful for Adam Coleman. He doesn't need the stretcher, but we can just see the pain that, uh, it's an Irish, that Irish he's ball. in. And that's where it happened. On the outside, okay, so he's, got space for his head. He's, uh, he's not had a great deal of fortune with, um, with injury oh, yeah, yeah. since turning up in these best. parts, and there's another big one for him. Yeah, it's frustrating for him. Just come back from the van, played last week in Montpellier, and 20 four minutes into this game I mean, that looks significant but in Ratuni Iwara coming on he was certainly yeah, yeah, at his ballast well so quick. just on the cutting himself there is no way in which I am saying that that he deserves to be hit into the head 
what I am saying is for people entering the ruck, try and stay on your feet, try and get low, of course, and over the ball, but keep it legal. When you're on your knees and you're messing with the ball, people then clear you out, and you do see incidents like that, which are either going to be red or yellow, but actually, more importantly, just dangerous. Crouch! Bind! Happy Ratuni Uawa on for the stricken Adam Coleman in Irish's second row. Chandler Cunningham South hanging off the back row and the ball cleared. It's not been a quiet start. Poor old Adam Coleman, he just has, well he gets himself banned, that's not bad luck, but the injuries he's had, horrible luck, he's a massive loss. Massive loss for London Irish, brilliant player, it's a real shame that. Run out, won by Dino Lamb. She caught a glimpse of, um, of James Chisholm, keeping warm on his bike uh, on that last shot. We'll be seeing Chisholm for the first time this season uh, in the second half, I'd imagine. First time in the Premiership, which is very good news for Quinns. And they're looking for all they can get at the moment. And Josh Bassett trying to provide some. Tommy Allen gets back into position, having set up that latest phase. Evans to Allen. Oh, that's nice. And here goes David. David skipping his way through. Pearson got back with a really important tackle. And then he was over the ball again, but not quick enough. Care and the try scored, and it's Tommy Allen. Very, very nice from Harlequins. I didn't see anything like. Numbers on numbers on numbers wrapping All around so in the end. Yeah. London Irish just ran out. Quinns kept going till they found a hole. Lorde did enough. Will Evans was it that took it to the line really, really sharp George. and put it out the back. George. Really strong Andrew. carry from Josh Bassett early on in a tough period for Quinns. He had a couple of really good defensive read. Ball in hand, he looked strong too. Lovely stuff. London Irish just can't, just don't step in in unison. The hole's there. No, 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 as you Thought they'd fluff their lines, but who just better there. than Danny That's Care fine. to get it right when it counts? Just be aware that Tommy the Allen, three right. tries this season, all of them against London Irish. He's he scored two in the winner of the, the stoop back in October. The thing I all loved about man. that, David, was once again the work of, of Nick David. He's not fullback today but he showed us exactly what he's been showing from fullback recently with that run and the step and just the manipulation of space but he's dangerous he's fast he doesn't lose a lot of speed when he changes direction kick goes wide he's he's not a big guy but he's powerful wiry he definitely needs putting down definitely needs stopping doesn't go to ground easy been a really good asset for Quinns when he's played I think now this is uh, Luke Wallace who um, is coming on off? for the fullback okay, Will Edwards. So Quinns are sacrificing their fullback to make sure they've got a full complement in the pack. Wallace on effectively uh, to fill in for Stefan Levis and his red card. I totally get the decision as well. This is a game where we're trying to deny the opposition quick ball and at the minute. That's what London Irish have really fed on. Luke Wallace is an absolute fetcher. We know Will Evans is the same. And to beat a team like London Irish, you've got to match them physically and disrupt what they do on the floor. And does that mean defensively, Hughes, that somebody is going to have to switch okay. back into the back three, or will they will they work with a, with a two-player pendulum? Well, Nick David and Josh Bassett have got to work tirelessly hard. I think Danny Kerr is going to have to do a lot more now, perhaps not staying in around the ruck and making sure they've got that backfield coverage right. But Nick David, at this moment, he's gone to 15. Josh Bassett's come across that right wing to give them that full complement there. Jennings took it up. He lift it. That's fine. Jennings good contest. More. In midfield today, alongside Bernard van Rensburg for Irish. Penalty on its way for the home side. Advantage. Penalty. The junior Uawa. And now Jennings tumbles towards Nothing the 22. Formed. White. Oh, Pearson didn't gather it cleanly. I'd also expect number to see Paddy Jackson yeah. having a really good look at that backfield. 
There's just going to be more space there, the has side. to be, and if he finds, Collapsing them all. if he sees three Harlequins back there defending that backfield, there's got to be space elsewhere, there's got to be space wide to compromise his Harlequins. Of course it does, it's just where the Paddy Jackson and his callers can take advantage of the new space that's appeared. Irish. OK, hang on, we've got two players down, got, time off. Um, Michael Dykes back on, so it's 15 against 40. Let's have another look at that last try, Hughes. It's really nice how they operate in position, their players. Look at them, all three of them, in a perpendicular line, and they are just waiting for people to run good lines. Lorde runs this, and that's the distraction. Then it's about timing of the pass and execution. Lift it perfectly from Tommaso Allen into that line. Nick David with his footwork. It's a great tackle from Tom Pearson, but when you get that level of quick ball, any number of players can score. It's like what they do of centre field scrums. They all just line one, pretty much like that. They are the injection of pace, and if you can provide them with a bit of time, right, we, and then we, you get players who are then threatening right. at the line to put them through holes, then you get tries like that. And that's a nightmare for defenders, isn't it? What are you supposed to look at? Are you man marking in that situation? Well, you, you're creating two v ones. Cunning himself, have got two defenders to try and tackle. Is it Lorde or is it Nick David? But at the moment, Charlie Mulcrone, he's talking to that back three about organising what that looks like. Cunning himself misses that, but Mulcrone, he's having a conversation to make sure they get that backfield coverage right. You can see him is now talking to Danny Kerr and the rest. How do you manage that? London Irish have such a good kicking game, and you can see just making sure they get that organisation right. Do you know what I'd love to hear? Like the NFL, I'd love to hear this coaching chat now, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would. I would, yeah. I think if you're going to say to coaches, yeah, you can go onto the pitch wearing a waterman's bib, then the deal is we can hear your yeah, chat. Yeah, love it. Yeah, lovely idea. And Danny Kerr, he properly listened then. I, 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 was, I was more interested in watching Danny Kerr then, a guy who... In inverted commas, knows it all and has seen it all, and he listened. He said, yeah, asked a quick question, got an answer, listened and listened and said, cheers, look. mate. So he's actually properly taken it on board, looking to adapt, taking someone else's word for where the space is. That's one of the reasons, it's one of the reasons he's lasted so long at such a high level is because he's willing to be told there's more, there's more than what he's doing. <laughs> you know, there's more to it. Asked uh, Tabai Matson this week to describe his relationship with... Um... Nick Evans, and he said it, it's one of radio silence. We've, we've definitely given Charlie Mulcrone the um, the controls, right. and we uh, we're seeing it here. More defending to do for Quinns, Rob Simmons, Adam Coleman off, having damaged his arm already. Going for a bonus point, and Oliver Hoskins, one of two remaining Wallabies on the pitch. White, the Scott, Jackson, the Irishman, and then flung across by Jennings. Goodness me, what a pass. And Dykes, oh, he just couldn't quite squeeze over. What defending that was, and it was Beard with a big, big intervention, and his mates there as well. Such good patience. You can see that ball coming, but what you don't want to do is take too many yards. He sits off, tracks back, and then makes that tackle. Beard comes across, and then it's the secondary effort to be able to get Dykes into touch. So it's that combination which you need. You need to make that tackle first. Beard backs it up. Release the tackle. Yeah, the main tackle was great, wasn't it? The secondary effort, but Oscar Beard then, if he doesn't come in, there's every chance that arm gets stretched out and it's a try. Good effort. Love the pass from Jennings. He almost emptied his guts, didn't he? Put that much into it. It was, it was a fabulous effort to get that far, and it nearly led to the try. Now then. Danger still persists, as we can all see. Half an hour gone. Already had five tries. Three for Irish. Oh, not straight. Scrum or line? Well, he's got a bit of credit Scrum in the bank, line. hasn't he? Augustin Creevy. Scrum or line? Scrum? Scrum. Scrum. Have you been... Um, following all the chat about world rugby and the RFU's plans to, to lower the tackle height this week, then I couldn't recommend rugby nice tonight high, more once we're done here. Proper deep dive into it all with Nick Easter, now coach is in the community game. Ross Tucker 
who is one of the leading scientific experts on the subject, and Wayne Barnes will be talking on behalf of um, the referees who are going to look after it. Premiership takes a weekend off next weekend, by the way, start the Six Nations, so um, it's the Premiership Cup that we're concentrating on in a fortnight, down to the semi-finals. Friday, February the 10th here for Irish Saints, and two weeks today, Exeter Sale contesting the uh, second semi-final. Take it out! Stay on side. On side. Will Goodrick Clark um, took a hefty hit in the middle of all that, and he's not much no. use at the moment. He's on his back and in, in a lot of pain by the looks of things. He's taking treatment. So back to 14 against 14 for the time being. Stokes, Tom Parton, Ben Loder, Carl Rowe, Ollie Hassel, Collins, all missing good at contest, the moment. But good contest. With Stokes and Sinti and Dykes, there's still plenty of pace. Quinn's brought back frustratingly for, for Will Evans. Yeah, head injury. That's why we stopped. Thank you, there. It's not just hurting fans and chasing him. I tell you, it's really the insurance. The ball was out. Just going straight I down. know, but look at the time yeah. that he's coming across the screen. The ball, the ball was out. I can't stay with the scrum. I went with the ball. Look at that. Okay. Look at that. The conversation is about um, Will Goodrick Clark, and this is where the injury. It's not me because he was down. Head injury, yeah. Occurred. In terms of head injuries, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think it is a head injury. I'm, I might be wrong, but it looks like he's, he was grabbing his back to me and looked like he had a back spasm, rolling around on the floor. And when you've had a spasm in your back, Ugo, you've got a bad back at the moment, haven't you? It's Good it's very difficult to know how to relieve that pain, hence the rolling around. They're now moving his legs up and down and all that stuff. It's um, I'll tell you now, when you've got a spasm in your back or you've really hurt your back, there aren't many less pleasant places to be than Stay a premiership higher. front row. So. If it is his back, it could be his knee, I don't know. There's a lot of things under a huge amount of stress in there. Most props yeah, have come out of scrums and wondered how on earth they've hurt their knee in a scrum or their hamstring in a scrum. It's just that your body is under so much pressure, kind of your whole body is under so much pressure, and that scrum twisted in, so it wasn't linear pressure, it was all moving, it was all torsional and twisty. So really, there's pick a part of your body, you could kind of hurt anything in there, frankly. I always find it interesting how a front rower does warm up because they've got tons of pressure going through them and they consider just putting their hand up against their head was replicating the same forces as the scrub. I'm not quite sure it does the same job, but for Schetti, he's about to come on, but good to see Goodrick Clark get him back to his feet. Ooh. Wow. He's joining you in the sore back club, Hughes, that's for sure. You can swap notes later. Well, Irish uh, losing another big bolt from their pack. They've already lost Adam Coleman. Now they're losing Oliver Hoskins. Happy Rituni Uawa came on to replace the former. And uh, an Italian, Danilo Fischetti, will come on to replace the latter. There he is. He'll be... Um, turning his sights towards Rome and the Six Nations and France soon enough, but first things first. Do you like Fischetti, Platt? Had a brilliant joke lined up then. Yes, I do. The yes, line, I do like Fischetti. Is it broadcastable? <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, just not very funny. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I do, yeah. I and mean, Goodrick Clark is uh, an excellent asset for London Irish. They don't lose a huge amount. Ooh, a junior hour down quickly, and it might have worked, but Chandler, yeah, Cunningham you. South, can gather it cleanly. Panic then. Yeah, Fischetti's um, obviously a proven operator himself. Smaller guy in terms of body weight. Interesting to see him go up against Wilco Lowe with all that mass, and that's just. Uh, well, he dropped it. Give us the joke. Well Give us the joke. Let us be the judge of whether it's funny or not. Well, ask me the question. Oh, you ask me the question. Okay, okay, okay. Let's let's pretend we haven't done this before. Uh, do you like Danilo Fischetti, Flex? Yes, with a bit of bolognese sauce. I wanted to do it. I made it to him once, and he thought it was funny, but he, I don't think it was the first time he'd heard it. What do we think, Hughes? Bind! I didn't want to start, I didn't... No, I know, I know, I forced you into it. And I was wrong too, I apologise. 
over five minutes to go. Crikey, the boys in the studio are going to need longer than they've got to sum this up at the break. Marla. Oh, it's actually uh, it's actually you and Sarah, boys in the studio, couldn't care less. They're um, eating magnums. Use it. <laughs> Magni, I think is the plural. <laughs> Not clear for me. Sorry. You need to get down there with Sarah. What are you doing? She needs help. You don't need to go just yet. We'll let you know. I'm presuming a zip wire is going to appear. <laughs> Reinforced. Thank you. towards a, a 50 minute plus first half here because of all the stoppings that we've had close to the 55 Chandler Cunningham South draws it on five minutes of real time to go here is Fischetti white Matt Rogerson the captain home players slowing the ball Simmons Takes on Luke Wallace, who was over it quickly, but just not quite quick enough. Whipped away by Stokes. And lost. One back by Allen. The it was the right option. Trying to pin that ball in that bottom corner, but the execution of it's been poor. Use it. Kick. He's not been entirely happy with his kicking so far today. And a running fullback, a running James Stokes. White kicking scrum half. And uh, a charging Fischetti. He tackles care. And then the work over the top. The hard work. Rogerson over it. Ends up drawing the penalty. We were talking about kicking. Was another lovely kick from Ben Why wasn't it? Just roll it into that corner. Spoke about trying to find that space at the moment. Well, it's Danny Kerr in that back of the, in the back of the field with Nick David. Very good contest at the breakdown, but Irish are playing a smart game. This is their third chance now into the 22 of the line out. Not straight, knock on. Big <laughs> moment now with three minutes All to go right, before okay. the half. It was clever that from Ben White, wasn't it? Just stressing that backfield defence now. Quinns are a man down. Danny Kerr gets to where he needs to be, but he's ultimately the counter-attacking crash ball runner, but he's so small, he has to put a bit of footwork on. Can't take any momentum into the contact. It's clever from Irish. Retunio hour. White had continued his run, but the, the forwards green players down. held on to it. White's there the now, being hustled by Kerr. Ball is available, stay back. Agustin no. Creevy takes over, off he goes. No. Runs in too low. Pearson winning it on the floor. He's got to somehow manipulate it back towards White. Rutunio Hour nods his head and says, give it to me. Great footwork from him too to get around Marla. Creevy half tackle by Herbst. Reminder, Quinn's down to 14. The red card for Stefan Levis. There will be holes somewhere. Fischetti. For the injured Goodrick Clark. 90 seconds to go. An eventful first 40. Maybe more stories to be told. Stokes over the top to Dykes. He's got two. Two on his debut. What a finish. What a Sunday afternoon for Michael Dykes. Oh, that was special. I'll tell you something, not only is it another brilliant drive, but it's the bonus point before half-time. This is it from Apatini Iwara. He gets them over the advantage line, and then it's just about keeping hold of the ball and composure. I cannot tell you how difficult a finish this is, because Stokes, he's off balance. He then transfers the ball, gets the handoff on his knees and in the corner. It's an exceptional finish. Ball in the left hand, big handoff. That's a try all day of the week. And the fourth. I was going to ask you, Oog, thinking when he got that ball, I thought 
Looks nice. I mean, actually, George Head's <laughs> got to do a lot better there with his tackle technique, but I thought he's not going to finish that. I was going to ask you how difficult it was. You've answered it. Really lovely stuff on Premiership debut from Michael Dykes. Well, we wondered who would, um, who would take up the scoring in the absence of Ollie Hassel Collins, Caden Murley from a Quinn's perspective. Michael Dykes leading the way at the moment. Paddy Jackson's toughest kick of the afternoon, but we've seen he's been striking it nicely. And oh, somehow, only in the last metre or so did that look like it was going between the posts. What a first half of rugby. Half a dozen tries, Chandler Cunningham South for the home team to get them going. Michael Dykes on his Premiership debut with two. Stokes as well. And for Quinns, the penalty try, Tommy Allen, but overriding it all, Stefan Levis and his red card. So much for us all to talk about at the break. Half time at the GTEC Stadium, London Irish 28, Harlequins 12. He has. Flats has um, clambered his way back up the zip wire, which was some feat of athleticism, but here he is. One and a half matches of Premiership rugby so far between these two this season, and we've had three yellows, three reds, and 13 tries. What of this next half? Kick-off gathered in safely by Rob Simmons. If you are joining us, I don't know where to start, to be honest, but let's begin to tell you that um, Adam Coleman was one of Irish's significant-looking injuries in that first half. They also lost Will Goodrick Clark, the loose head prop. Harlequins, perhaps most significantly, in fact, most significantly, lost their captain, Stefan Levis, to a red card, flying into a ruck and connecting with the head of Chandler Cunningham South, who had his own moment as well. He wasn't far away from a red. Um, and there have been some tries as well, but we don't have time to tell you about them. Just a scrum for me. And this man has been uh, busy as he always is, Lucio Sinti. Ratun Uawa, who was first half replacement for Coleman Jackson Jennings fullback Stokes playing his part in them um, setting up tries and scoring tries as well that's gone forwards Quinn's with the advantage no for advantage over for the knock on use it care One by Quinns and Evans flings it back and low again. Herbst busy. Oh, that's gone loose, not for the first time. Irish looking to profit from loose ball and Pearson got it away nicely. Initially helped out by Jackson, now it needs to be laid back and is by White, but. Quinns have managed to shuffle back the defenders that they have. If only Irish could have kept hold of that ball, I'll show you just in a minute. It's Joe Marler sets up a platform for Danny Gerta, no doubt try and find touch. London Irish was so efficient in the first half, scoring their four tries. Tom. And you can see here, the minute they made this break, they get right in behind. Tommy Allen tries to put that in the Just backfield. Have the a look now a at how narrow not. Harlequins are. That's all 15 players of this. If they shift it, there is no one outside of Tom Lorde. In fact, Joe Marler becomes the last defender. All they needed to do, when I say all they needed to do, of course they wanted to do that, but one extra phase, and that could have been try number five, because London Irish in the red zone, well, they've been very good so far, haven't they? I mean, both teams have been very good. It's just London Irish have been able to score twice the amount of tries that Harlequins have been. You good? 
but now and again, when you see that much space pop up in front of you, you know a try is on I'm if the on. ball can be moved. Everyone gets in position to facilitate the score and no one remembers to go and pick up the ball. First things first. For a two new hour, despite the hard Let's work of Lamb to stop him. Actually, Lamb may well have Landing conceded the, the penalty. You got an advantage. Dykes went round the other side, White went on his own, then connected with Dykes. And it is a dreamy Premiership debut. A hat-trick on his Premiership debut for Michael Dykes. What a day! What contributions! He scored every type of try, but that guy there, Ben White, he has been so sharp. They get their penalty advantage. Augustin Creevy just meanders through the field, gets that gain line, which has been so prominent. Then it's slow ball. With slow ball, you've got time to defend. Tom Lorde is just watching the ball, steps out, creates that space, an offload. And Dykes, what he is doing really well is he is just following off the coattails of people that make breaks and Ben White has most yeah, definitely been that person. Congratulations. Starting to wonder who had um, the biggest impact try-wise on his Premiership debut. I'll give you a couple of minutes to see if you can remember actually, it's a good quiz question. Flats thinks he knows, he's a show-off. But um, yeah, who scored a bag load of tries on their Premiership debut? More than Dykes has got at the moment. Converted try, by the way. Yeah. Leslie Vinacola. Oh. That's a win. Yeah, Tom Lorde gets back and makes the tackle, but the damage is done by then. Brilliant by Dykes. And yeah, Leslie Vinacola. It's against Leeds for Gloucester, wasn't it? Four tries or five? Five. <laughs> Sorry about that. 2001. No, seven. Back by Green or forward off Quinn, Jordy. OK, forward off White, so... Play yeah, sorry. Kick just having a look at him and just his movement and involvement. This is where he initially finds himself. Right, stop there, stop there. And stop then there. he spots it. And he accelerates into the space, busts through the tackle, try. He's finished off a couple of really good ones, but he made that by spotting the opportunity, then finishing it. Right. Mr. Hazen. First player in. First on his Quinn's feet, change. turnover. Jack Moss, one Head. Oh, goodness me. Feels good to be Irish right now. That was a really good bit of breakdown play from Tom Pearson. Okay, we'll check. To win the turnover. Good carry by Quinn. Keep your eye on Pearson coming in there. Taken back, then a phase. Just does enough, gets enough on it and hangs on in there. Agreed. He's not okay, the lowest 50, player. Very good work. Leads to this, leads to this kick, leads to this field position, the 50-22. The rock was driven in. So that's stolen yeah, fine, by Lamb. Hold, Quinns. Thank you. Bassett chases his own kick. End of the week when we learned that Joss Bassett was on his way to Leicester at the end of this season. Heading back to the Midlands. First man. Yeah, turnover, Evans. Ah, kicked into Jennings, got it back. Somehow, somehow, Lorde now. Opportunity this for Quinns and Beard. Nesta Hazen Onside. there to release some air over the ball. Allen. Here's the new man, Musk. Herbst. Quinns re-exploring that time. Slightly shorter blind side to the right. Beard. Good choice. This time they go a little bit wider on the open side to Marla. Allen swings it away and David oof, beautifully done to find Lamb. Some of the stuff that Nick David has done this season. It's his footwork just before the ball which allows him to accelerate and create two v2s into two v1s such a bright player
Had a chat with him um, this week. He he reckoned that Caden Murley would be quicker than him uh, in a sprint, but nobody else in the uh, in the Quinn's squad. Ten metres per second is um, is his cruising speed. Is that? I assume that's good. That is very good. Chris Ashton used a good phrase called rugby fast. And he Irish is very good numbers, at being Irish, rugby fast, out. changing Tom, direction, out, out, manipulating defenders out. and using that speed effectively. Somebody else who can do that is Henry Arundel, and we're about to see him for the first time in a while. What? He's down below us on the touchline, ready for action. Meantime, Quinn's looking to ease their way back into this, at least begin to shout a little bit more. Might yet work for them, it's uh, a tumbling low. And that will take some looking at. Goal line drop out. Oh, a decision has already been taken by Matthew Hold Carley up. that he was held up. And with Wilco Low, as Dom carrying as dominant as is that, to get no past, past Simmons. And he steams Green over, so it's pointless at that point trying to knock him backwards. Okay. Get underneath him, take the hit, be passive, Matt. win the drop out. Matt. Much better from Quinn's mind. 15 metres out from touch and on the five. Penalty only, foul play by four uh, number four, no arms tackle, so it'd be a penalty. That uh, was picked up by Tim today, Ben no Whitehouse. no arms tackle. Not going quickly. Uh, what do they do? Do they, do they tap it and unwrap it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, their biggest source, I think, is the scrum. But it looks like they're opting to go to the corner. Here's the penalty. Get your arms up, yeah. Let's go, seven! Yeah, I know. It's a bit harsh. It can't be seven, that's for sure, OK? So out on the line. Jack Musk takes it More. short and sharp. Line it over. Stop Dino lines. Lamb barking out the instructions. Care takes it. Yes. Esther Hazen. Yes. Pearson's there again. Yes. Pearson says he's on the ball, but then he was buffeted off it. Oh, and Irish somehow have got it back. And White to Sinti. You know, Pearson did just enough over. damage at that ruck. He didn't nick the ball. But he made Quinn's panic and scramble, got a hand on it, destabilised it, and it spat out the side. And here we go. Eight. For the first time since October, Eight. since Eight. injuring Eight. his foot against Gloucester, which needed an Don't operation. Numbers, they haven't got seven forwards on. Yeah, Henry yeah, Arundel. He takes the place of James Stokes. And Chandler Cunningham South off for a. Another impressive young man, Juan Martin Gonzalez, the Argentine back rower. And Arundel has gone straight to fullback. Gonzalez part of this defensive line out operation, and there's his first impact. It's a reasonably lax drill that from Harlequins, it was all a bit predictable. Wasn't a double top throw. The movement wasn't too quick. Worked out all right for Quinns, but Irish disrupted that rather too easily. Dino Lamb moving to the front. Oh, it's been stolen. <laughs> That's just brilliant defence. That's Quinns did nothing wrong, just brilliant defence. He's only been on for five seconds. He's already man of the match. Nick too. <laughs> but he saw the game uh, in Montpellier last weekend, but... Um, as a starter, Juan Martin Gonzalez User! was was just well, he was on hurricane level. It was an extraordinary <laughs> performance. The only thing that took that was London Irish's announcement of him resigning. But this is excellent. Look how athletic. I mean, that's not straight, and he's managed to get across, win that ball two-handed. In fact, the last five minutes, the defensive set from Irish, whether it's nicking ball in the line out, holding that Wilkeller over the try line and just showing that level of physicality. Quinn's about to bring on Simon Kerrod for Wilco Low. Uh, meantime, Esther Hazen. Oh, and now Bassett! Yes! Yes, 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 and it's Harlequin, so you never know. You never know. 
Good anticipation from Andre Esterhaze and he steamed onto that ball. It all got a bit scrappy at the back. Somebody had to act decisively. Somebody had to be proactive. Ben White actually tipped it over the top of Lorde, who fancied it. Esther Hazen did very well, delayed the pass perfectly. And Henry Arundel's potential first involvement was a try saving tackle, but he couldn't make it. Bassett, too quick and too strong. All good for me, Matt. Well, it's very good anticipation you, from both of them. Conversion. Mm. Five point score, 35 17. <laughs> Let's have a, a, a chat with Adam Jones, of course, part of Harlequin's coaching team. Um, Adam, we've just seen a, 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 a shot of Steph Levis. I know it's a tough question to answer in the middle of the match, but your reflections on the red card? Um, oh, look, I think, you know, it was all, it was, everyone's kind of falling on the floor at the same time, and unfortunately, Steph caught him a wee bit. And, um, but, you know, that's, that's the game at the moment, and uh, the chap had a bit of, pretty, obviously, had a pretty bad bang to the head, so. Um, yeah, it is, it is what it is. It's, uh, it is, uh, it's in the laws, so uh, you've got to get on with it, really. I think Sarah and, 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 and Flats were, were, were struggling to know what to leave in and what to leave out in their half-time chat. So how did you prioritise what you needed to talk about at the break? Because there was a lot going on in that first half. Well, I think with, you know, obviously going down a man, um, you know, we've had to adapt a few things, especially in the back lane in defence. You know, obviously we brought in another forward on, so uh, Luke Walsh has come on to give us another line option. And so I think that was the main focus. I think just creeping back into the game, three points at a time, five points at a time, you know, that's going to be the key. You know, I think we probably got dominant to scrum and we're mauling pretty well. We just kind of got to, you know, stop them really, because, um, you know, they're, uh, they're playing uh, some pretty good rugby as well, as you can see now. All right, brilliant. Thanks for your time. Lovely. Man. Cheers, boys. Count is good. Arundel was through a hole then in that 13 channel, just needed Quince to be a bit off in defence and the ball would have got to him, but they defended that really, really well and they've nipped it. Marla, Allen, thought about passing, opted for the kick, Wallace chases, ooh, and Paddy Jackson, a rare error down low. Apologies for the language. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Because it's 35 17 and Quinns are a man down, but there's still that suspicion that Irish need more tries to be absolutely sure of this just because of who they're playing today. When you've got two teams that have the capacity to be able to score as many tries as what we've seen, there's already eight within 54 minutes. It's bonkers. But an 18 point lead, yes, whilst that's significant. We're talking about teams that can score tries within minutes of one another. And if Harlequins can pick you back their last try of another one now, all of a sudden that doubt creeps in. And let's face it, London Irish have been at the end of a lot of results where they've almost just been there. Taken by Wallace. Beard's waiting. Uh, instead, it's to Esther Hazen. Beyond Musk to Marla. Lorde looks in a handy position here. However, it's in front of him. They were looking for Wallace. Didn't work. Irish scrum, Irish applause. Danilo Fischetti. Right. Fight. Come here. Come here. No, no, no. Listen. If I think that any of your players are holding players in on the floor like I did at that breakdown, I'm not going to reward you with a rolling away penalty. It's going to be a penalty because of the way you just shouted at me. Please don't do that again. I, I believe he was. And next time, next time, I will stop the game and penalise you. Good call, good refereeing that. It really is, and I, and I totally understand what they're talking about. And it comes off this Joe Marler carry. It's a good carry, but you see in which he's trying to position his body. He's actually taking another role. Irish need to do better, but if you are trapping players in there, you're not going to be rewarded that at all.
Okay, find the middle, find the middle, find the middle. Perfect, uh, thank you. Mike Willemse is on for Irish at hooker. Um, a bigger story, James Chisholm, first time this season. On for Tom Lorde, he's worked hard for his first Quinns game of the season. He's been injured at the start of it. Went off on loan to London Irish to get his fitness, and now here he is back in the Gallagher Premiership, which is good to see. Oh, he's gone Bassett backwards. Up, but didn't get it clearly. Oh, went backwards for me. Nonetheless, Quinn's ball, Marler's ball. And he, uh, with uh, some determination, runs into Oliver Hoskins. Use it! Care. Taken by... Uh, good timing, man, on the floor. Arundel. White, Fischetti, broke the first tackle. Simmons. Jennings held the pass and brought Aaron Dull in instead. Counter's good, ball is there, good contest. Rattlingly hard work over that ball, but still and Paddy Jackson to care who was nicely positioned David repositions himself to be of help on this kick taken by Arundel only player on his feet only oh, player no, on his been feet taken. Will Evans the work he has Advantage, done Jacqueline coaching with the play, all season Penalty advantage. Quinn's with the penalty. Pull it, pull it. Oh, Musk. Allen. No way through there, but we will come back. That Will Evans turnover was great, wasn't it? Just the athleticism of it. It was almost gymnastic. Roll away if you really want the classy jackal. work. Gets on it early. The clear out comes. Ratuni Uara fails to dislodge him initially, and when he does, talk about awareness of your own body positions and those of everyone else. A computer game, isn't it? <laughs> He's been truffling around all season. Him and Tommy Rafael, if they get their hands on the ball, it's just not coming back. They clamp onto it, they're perfect body shapes, but beyond that, their other player, I mean, look at his eye. Yes, they've got good body shapes for it, but technically, I don't think there's anyone better than Will Evans or what Tommy Rafael show every single week. So Quinn's first target, a losing bonus point, or at least a try scoring bonus point for a fourth. And they might get one here. There's a, a long way to go, but James Chisholm recently restored to the ranks. Very much part of this. So to Musk, and they're breaking away. Oh, oh Danny Care. And Quinn's with the ball, and they're so dangerous here. So dangerous. Dykes. Looking for a fourth. And now the penalty. Well, on the line it was Musk, I think, that threw an offload that didn't need to be thrown to Danny Kerr. Nobody was expecting it. Not clear thinking under pressure. Danny Kerr didn't want that in his windpipe. But then the break came. It's a brilliant bit of counter-attacking from Irish, but watch Josh Bassett. It's Oscar Beard gets Beard. back and makes the tackle. Oh, it's Beard that gets over the top. Apologies. Well, it's hands on the deck first, actually, if we're being pedantic. Which we are, because we watch replays. Time off. Very exciting game. Oscar Beard's first Premiership start of the season. Joe Marchant uh, away with England. An hour gone. I'm actually running out of room on my notepad. It, 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 it's been ridiculous, hasn't it? It has. Harlequins want to up the tempo because they need to get back in the game and they're chasing it. But London Irish are playing the game as if they're also chasing the game. The one thing they need is probably to slow the tempo of the game down, kick the ball significantly more than what they currently do, because you look at territory. 
And for the large part of this second half, it's been played in their half. I thought the blueprint for their success Water in the first please. half was their ability to control that kicking game, win those crumbs in the air, and then be devastating with their efficiency in the opposition yeah, half. The ground, Playing too much rugby, the, especially uh, with the threats right. of your Will Evans on the pitch, and a Luke Wallace, they they're feeding Harlequins' game. Jerry Flannery working hard on his Chewy and watching this, and this is the moment that Flannery has helped engineer this cool? week. Line-out coach, and off that set-piece, Beard drove into midfield. Tommy Allen, ooh, no way through. Simmons was all over him. Or rather, Rogerson was all over him. Gone backwards, play on! Chisholm. Good choice. Playing in the championship up the road with Scottish. Marla. There's a gathering feeling about Harlequins right now. To remind ourselves that they're still playing a man down as they will for the rest of this match after the red card for Stefan Levis. After just a quarter of the game. That was Simmons over the ball, but not able to slow it down. Marla once more. Care. Oh, it's rather red by Hoskins, but um, with the advantage. Quinn's that close. Lamb scores. Yes. Well, if you move, this is the ball on the line. Number three was the high tackle, mate. Thank you. Very impressive power plays from Harlequins. Very, very direct. Joe Marler, multiple contributions. Couple of really heavy close quarter carries from him. Ollie Hoskins will be sick of the sight of Joe Marler. He's taken about 10 yards out of him in two carries. Dino Lamb did very, very well, but there was a lot of power that went in before that. Chisholm with a handy latch. And you're right, there is a, a gathering feeling. And Oogs, with regards to what you said about London Irish, it's what got them out to the 18-point lead. They mustn't forget what got them there. They've got to clear their lines, they've got to clear their lines. All good, Matt. I've got a bit of an uh, sorry, obstructed view, but I can see the ball. Well, Dino Lamb with yeah, uh, no, Harlequin's no. fourth try, the, um, the bonus point securing try, and all of a sudden a London Irish lead that was 23 when Michael Dykes nabbed a hat trick. Uh, as the instructions go to uh, Scott Steele, they're back within 11. It's not beyond the realms, is it? You saw the matches over the weekend. Sale Sharks on Friday night. East Midlands derby yesterday. Kieran Parker for Inside. Hoskins. Oliver Hoskins, the latest change. Into the final quarter. Use it! No! The ball's not out, though. That's the voices from up the road that you can hear at the moment. Do me a favour and stay tight on there. That's all right. I've got to say, just on Joe Marler, I'm not sure if there's another front rower that plays as many minutes with as many contributions. 13 carries this week. He, he's not the 55-minute sub man, is he? Nope. A question on Joe Marler for our... Um, Prop correspondent in a moment. Here goes Simmons. He's never scored a hat trick. No, not on his debut anyway. Uh, here goes Arundel. The man who has scored a hat trick on his debut. Michael Dykes goes in to try to spade the ball back. Fischetti. So the question. Um, that I have about Joe Marler. I understand that the, the qualities of Ellis Genge and Mako Bonapola and Bevan Rod, who are all in the squad, but um, what's going on with Joe Marler? Why, why, is, is he still in Steve Borthwick's mind, do you think? Why isn't he part of the, the squad preparing for Scotland? Oh, yeah, there's not, there's not a coach who wouldn't have him in their thoughts. Um, I'd have him in, but I'm not the coach. I, he's one of those players that I think if, if, it, if your set piece is going wrong, if it's all going pear-shaped, it's really handy to have a bull like that on the bench that you can bring on 
who not clear, it's, behind him it's not that he doesn't struggle right against right anyone, but he very, very rarely struggles against anyone, even the very best. So I, you know, I wouldn't name an England squad without him in it if he was fit. Uh, but England are obviously backing the guys. England have got so many good loose heads. I mean, Val Rapava Ruskin's not in either, and he's charging around in the best form of anyone. So there's an embarrassment of riches, I think is what you call it. There's tons of them. But he, for me, is a great guy to have, at least in reserve, to shore things up if you need it. Yeah, Steve Borthwick, short for choice. I have to be honest, when he wasn't in the squad, I had to check that he'd, he'd not retired from Test Rugby or something, yeah, and I missed it. Same. Yeah. It was a, for me, it was a gimme to have him in, but one thing we know about Steve Borthwick is that he doesn't leave many stones unturned, probably none, and it will be a considered decision. Joe Powell has uh, come on for Ben White at scrum half for Irish, Australian, Wallaby caps, only four of them. He started down in Montpellier last weekend. Next time we see Ben White may well be at Twickenham next weekend. He will remember last season's Calcutta Cup for good reason. Anyway, here's Powell now. Ooh, and Jennings. It's been a while since Irish got to play their trumpet or whatever their instrument of choice is. Gonzalez initially took it on, and then Fischetti, two of the replacement. Powell is another one once more. Gonzalez. No seven. Will Evans that time repelled by the referee's voice. Whilst we're seeing continuity of the ball at the moment, and that was a good search and option. I think when you've been starved of territory for so long, one of the arts of the game which is missing, which I think London Irish could really do with, not that type of kick, but Paddy Jackson sitting no, in the pocket come on, come on. and drop goal and taking three points at the minute. The timeline of scores has been Harlequins, Harlequins, and just three points just to break that cycle and extend your lead is something which I think is often missed. Simmons with Willemsep rolling One around. Stop. Here he is. Still having a shot. He wasn't far away. Pearson will go next. Almost managing to bury under it. Kerrod. Irish looking for a try that may well finally take them clear as we approach the final 10 minutes. Powell's there, might think of a snipe on his own. Instead, it's Rogerson. And Wallace was there and importantly there. Sixth Irish try may well end the debate and it might be ended here by Aaron Dahl. Oh. Lucio Sinti, fingertips away. No, I'm sack one on the four. Wasn't a great pass, that was it. Sinti shrieking for it. He's got to get him the You're ball. Not going quick with another ball. Paddy Jackson had a lot of pressure on, he had to get rid of that. I'm Oscar Beard no, did really sack, well. Ball. But actually, was it Josh Bassett had bitten in? It was on, just the pass wasn't good enough. No arms tackle means that Irish had the penalty and they now have just the throw the five metres out. Kieran Parker with the secret code to Willemsen. Pearson to the tail just behind Gonzalez, Simmons in front of him, and it was meant for Rogerson. Despite um, the towering work of Lamb, it got to Rogerson, and Willemser comes in and pals there as well to You're resuscitate it quickly. Bottom, Maybe please. now Jennings and Jackson, and now Arundel. This time he gets... Oh, no! It's Jamal, it's Jamal. Well, you know what I was about to say, but he didn't. It was behind Sinti, and Irish need another go, and it's a Number yellow. One. And I think it's Joe Marler who takes 10, which will pretty much do for his match. But Henry Arundel now with a couple of passes, both of which could and maybe should have led to tries, and that's where Marler pulled them all down that led to the yellow.
so Quinns needing to hold on here down to 13 four stay out of the middle four Willemsen. Good contact. Once again, Dino Lamb was working really hard and he's, oh, he's done brilliantly. Really good. Really good read. They're, because they're a man down in there, they don't really want to get into a mauling situation, especially not without a prop who's probably one of your best maulers, used to being in that hey, position, sorry, one of your strongest guys. Advantage. Sorry, I didn't see the ball. So they gamble and get up. It's brave to get up because if they don't win that ball, they're not on the deck to know, defend the ball. Said, Here's Eleven. Arundel. I mean, he should be catching that really it's not a brilliant pass it's better than the first one but it stops him need a prop unless you fancy it personally as you a sure? winger get closer to Aaron okay, hang on, he's he doesn't have to 19. be trying a 15 metre pass that should be a 7 metre pass from racing to the corner Quinn's near the prop um, so here's Finn Baxter and good? I think they were thinking Harlequins of replacing on. On the 15. Baxter with Josh Bassett, but interestingly, they have taken off the weight of James Chisholm instead and left Bassett to defend against Sinti. It's a. Uh, it's a. Oh, it's Bassett. Oh, for half a second, Bassett thought of going into the scrum and no he's decided not he to. wanted it he wanted the glory Five. they said not yet kid you're not ready <laughs> tell you what this ball needs to find touch there's only four batch chasing this at the minute oscar beard's done a very decent job there but this exit with so many players off their feet here's back step Use it! Musk in there putting his um, shoulder to the job. Care. And he finds Arundel. Mind full of adventure. Pow. Irish stepping things up here. Jackson, Jennings, Sinti. Van Rensburg was way to the right, but uh, he wasn't allowed to get it away. Bassett wrapped him up beautifully. Parker. Powell. Pearson. Game over. You are tempted to think. We know it's Harlequins. We know it's Harlequins, but surely now game over. Tom Pearson. When he, as soon as he dived over, I thought, how's he scored that? There are defenders in place. Joe Powell, really good idea to switch the play. But Quinn's aren't caught short on the blind side. There are numbers there. Good idea, as I said, for Powell to go blind. Quinn's look ready. Very explosive from Pearson. Really good footwork. Arundel look really sharp here. Fight after contact. That's been the hallmark of Harlequins, also of London Irish. Watch Pearson now, he gets up from the ruck, but it's his late footwork at the line. Bang, just gets away outside of Oscar Beard. That late footwork then, as well as that body position, just a couple of metres out, but those small details at contact is why I think London Irish have dominated a lot of the physical battles today. One of the less glitzy features of this game today, one of the less headline-catching features, has been the quality of Paddy Jackson's kicking from the team. Striking it really, really well, makes such a difference to a team when you could basically rely on a guy to just keep the scoreboard ticking over. But just a quick word on Tom Pearson. He, he's put the footwork on and skinned an outside centre, 72, 73 minutes in, to an absolute shift. He's been into everything, banging and clanging all day, so abrasive. So powerful, big bloke putting footwork on like that. Fantastic from the young bloke. Tommy Allen with a little stubby restart that uh, works because it was chased by Wallace and Co. 
And here's Scott Steele, who's come on for Danny Kerr. Uh, Lennox and Yangwu as well, you'd have seen back for his first game in a couple of months. So he'll enjoy the moment, if not necessarily the scoreline. And Yangwu uh, uh, Yan taking the place of uh, Oscar Beer. Sorry. Luca Marisi, we're hearing as well, is uh, yeah, I'll come I'll come I'll come he's on for Irish. Get your feet up, OK? Nice, high, strong bind. Yes, lads, come on. Come on. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, mate. Let's go. Hey, I'll come this side. There's lots of different things that can happen. We need to uh, find out who the player of the match is uh, in a moment or two. Hugo's got the job today. Let's go, Rods! Let's go, Rods, come on! Crouch! Bind! Set! Play it out! Quint have only got four backs. Allen's one of them. Uh, David's another. Bassett's another. And here's Andy Hanwu. They use, they use them all in about five seconds. Here's one of the forwards, Luke Wallace. Tackle, move away! A reminder that they are down to 13. Joe Marler's yellow. Stefan Levis is red in the first half. Folk joining us all the time. But still down to 13. The threat that Harlequins and, and Yanwu carry with them into the final five minutes. After those um, two quick Quinns tries for Bassett and Lamb. When we began to wonder, the conversation has been put to bed by Tom Pearsons, but both sides will run and run hard and run with ambition until the end. Lamb. Oh. Nicely done by David to find Anyanwu. Still. Back step. Ball was out, play on. Ball was out, play and foul made life difficult for Steele. Loose ball, whose ball? Irish ball. Jennings made sure, but um, Not lost on, forward. So, who has um, caught forwards. your eye most of all, you? Well, I think Ben White has been exceptional today. Oh. I think his kicking okay, game, his control, and the tempo which he's played the game has been very, very good. Tom Pearson, funnily enough, always comes into the conversation. Bring your feet up. Ten carries, 15 tackles, his work rate exceptional up, as well as a try. But Michael Dykes on Premiership okay? debut I'm with a hat forward. trick. What a day for him Don't and for London forward. Irish. He's our Gallagher up, Premiership player of the match. And his tries had absolutely everything in them. Cheers, Bob. This one just interplay, of course, Tom Pearson's involved. That was just a lovely little dot yeah, down. Sorry, this right. one here, I think, is great balance, lovely Thanks. offload. And then the third one, he makes it. Yes, it's Ben White, but it's his identification of where the threat is. Three tries at home oh, on okay, debut. What a day for him. It's not quite Leslie Vinacole, who I assume won the, won the player of the match that day back at Headingley, but he, he'll, he'll do today, Flats. You'd hope so. Also, um, Michael Dykes win, should win player of the match for the one of the most comedy deliberate knock-ons I've ever seen. One of the most obvious yellow cards I've ever seen. It was like he was rejecting yes, a layup hello, in the NBA. It was that bad, but we'll forgive him because he's been otherwise brilliant, and congratulations to him. What a debut. Are you going to carry on, is he? Sure. He's been yeah. good, Rogerson. He's put in so many. That was a big tackle on. I think it was on Finn Baxter that hurt him, gave him a bit of a stinger. But I've kept my Time eye on, on him a bit because it's hard to no, keep your place, I imagine, here. in this back row when you've got Juan Martin Gonzalez on the bench ready to go. Rogerson today, I think, has been quietly superb. Done a load of good quality work. Come on, come on, lads. Come on, come on. Checkers! It's a great Crouch. place to Stop come and watch rugby here. Yeah. Fine. Set. All away. Bassett. Steel. Backwards. Play on. Musk. Next. Then Baxter. Dropped, but backwards. 
He scored the ball. Play on. Wallace he tried to accelerate into that because he sensed what was happening. Irish have won it back. Powell kicks long. Bassett at the end of a long afternoon with a long run back being hunted. This is it. Gonzalez yeah, mentioned Bob. him a few times, and that's just a smart kick, isn't it? Bit of topspin rolls into that corner. Josh Bassett does his very best to be able to do it, oh, but right. Sinti may have wanted that's to that's score a try in that corner. Makes a real good defensive tackle, which gives them another opportunity. Over 15. Oof. Yeah. Not like that, Alan. Jordy, play on. Yeah. David. Oh, off he goes again. He has just been fabulous this season. There it is, encapsulated in what 40, 50 meters. He's been one. Of, he's been one of the stars of this season, Nick David. Make no mistake of that. Yeah, it was Tyrone Green last year. Nick David this year for, for Harlequins at 15. Got so many live wires. Evans. Dino Lamb. Been impressed with Lamb as well. He's busied himself in the losing course today. He has been. And Quinn's have been well beaten, but a couple of their lads have really stood up. Marler, I think, was superb. Nick David in particular. Will Evans, Dino Lamb, as you say. Well beaten, but they haven't laid down at any point. For Irish, I'm just really pleased that the tempo they started the game and when they've lost so many narrow victories and Montpellier when they were 21 nil up to be able to execute the game in the way in which they do and it's understandable when you play against quality opposition they will have purple patches but how they've been able to ride that come back and Pearson finally just nailed that oh, no, no, no. <laughs> get that try which has given them a bit of breathing space that would be the most pleasing thing I think about all of it is five points from this will hurtle them up the table not quite enough to overtake Quinns in six because of um, matches one but advantage. that's the kind of company they'll be keeping at the end of this whatever happens here and advantage being played you put contact in the air pull them down yeah number four Matt. it's been looked at number four Rob Simmons ping, but it, he says I literally did not touch him, but he's been ping for contact in the air. You can just have the line out, guys. So you one of them's right, the one of them's wrong. You don't have to kick it, you can just have the line out. Line out. You don't have to kick it. It's a line out. You don't have to kick it. Have a look. The scrum hat, see if there's any contact in the air. Well, he does touch him. He's got his left hand on his hip and he gives him a little shove. He's wrong, ref's right. Wonderful sky. Quinn's looking to um, to end on an up. Pretty much everybody involved in the match at the moment is involved in this, and Harlequins decisively over the line. But it's walloped away. And the smile on the face of. Danilo Fischetti, we're not done yeah, just yet. Double check that the player didn't reach the line to score, but I think he was short and knocked the ball on. Yeah, Matthew I just Carly's already not asked the director for it, mate. We're ready, we're ready, we're ready. Ben Whitehouse, not just yet either. It's only going to be a try or the end of the game, I think. Or a try. Held up Wilco low about 20 minutes ago. And that's yeah, another point yeah, there for clearly that's not done that. Another fabulous London knees up between these two. Ten tries. Two yellows, a red. Loads of things for us to talk about as we head off into the evening. London Irish 42, Harlequins 24.